For me personally with coaching, my journey began about a decade ago. Had an opportunity to engage in some workshops around change management, emotional intelligence, and learn about the growth model. And for me, it just made sense. It was simple and it was practical. So started the relationship with Growth Coaching International quite early on and through our director in Western Australia, Grant O'Sullivan. So through that, um, piqued my interest and ultimately then did the coaching accreditation program. And certainly when I reflect on all of the professional learning that I've engaged in in my career, and it's now 27 years with the Department of Education, I've done further study, I have a master's degree, but it all pales in comparison to becoming an accredited executive coach. It's that program and that learning for me has been the single most important influencer on my career and has certainly been the factor that has assisted me to get where I am now in my career. So um, at Comet Bay College in 2011, they had engaged in the Introduction to Leadership Coaching course. So there was interest, there was appetite amongst the leadership group to pursue um, coaching in terms of a framework, a process um, to assist the school to take it to the next level. So Comet Bay College is a, a great school, but results had plateaued. So they were looking at how can we shift the school from here and get it up to here. And it became an independent public school in 2012. So at that time, the principal, Jamie Hares, actively sought assistance in terms of getting someone in with expertise to assist in getting the school to the next level. Um, hence, he created a role purpose built for myself. So previously I had been Manager of Leadership Development at the Institute for Professional Learning. So that's for um, the system public education in WA. And he created a purpose built role for me to come into the college and embed the coaching culture, performance and development culture, build the capacity of the staff. So really harness that interest, but have someone uh, to assist him to help drive it. Okay, so over the last uh, two and a half years in particular, we have had the vision in terms of wanting to use a coaching process across all layers of planning, self-assessment, review, in the development and review of business plans, operational plans, as part of uh, performance and development, classroom observation feedback, and beginning now to ultimately work with students. So when I reflect back, over a relatively short journey of two and a half years, coaching has made a significant impact already to Comet Bay College. So we have trained all of our leadership group in coaching. Some of them have also done the team coaching. We have trained teachers in the co-coaching for improved classroom performance. So as part of our classroom observation and feedback model. So we've got 22 staff trained in that already with further staff to be trained later this year. So basically we're creating a cascade model of training uh, people uh, so that we have a significant portion of the staff that have had their capacity built. We have coaching completely embedded as part of our performance and development framework. So we're authentically implementing the EITSL performance and development framework, but we use that with a growth model. So the teachers follow that model as part of their conversations that they have with their performance developer. We do termly check-ins as part of that as well. So rather than an annual process, we do the termly, termly check-ins. We have, so informal and formal coaching conversations are occurring on a regular basis. Um, as I mentioned before, with the classroom observation feedback, we're utilising uh, Growth Coaching International for training in that area, so that's one aspect as well. So we have interested teachers that work with their peers, they go into the classroom, observe each other, they're having the, the pre-coaching conversation, the collection of the data and the, the post-coaching conversation and the uptake of that has been fantastic. Uh, staff are really engaged and having those informal coaching conversations, as I said, continually. The, the impact that it's had on our planning in particular has been significant. So being an independent public school, we create a business plan. So we've utilised the growth model in the development of that plan and the consultation of staff with that plan. All of our operational planning and the layers that drill down to even learning area plans at the college level all use the growth model, um, particularly around the use of tactics. 
and when we review those um, plans on a termly basis, we go back once again and we use the growth model. So it's significantly impacted on our planning in particular. Our self-assessment and review, we utilise the growth model as well. And certainly when we were reviewed last year as part of our um, independent public school review, one of the things that we were commended for was our self-assessment and review and the use of the growth model. So it's had a significant impact in that area. And we're now just beginning, but already looking at uh, the impact that it's having on students. So we have a year seven to nine program called REACH, which stands for Resilience, Emotional Awareness, Careers and Health. So that's actually timetabled for students twice a week to work with specialist teachers and it's aligned to the general capabilities of the Australian curriculum, in particular the personal and social capability. And as part of that, they look at emotional intelligence and they are taught goal setting. So we're starting to, it's in its infancy, so we're starting to actually explicitly teach the growth model to students so that they can utilise it. Uh, we have teachers as well using the model, particularly around uh, the, use of, the use of feedback with students as well. So that's starting to have an impact too. Oh, definitely. I think you have to start with a vision in mind of ultimately what you want your your you know work site to become so you know if you were to you know roll the calendar forward 24 months and you're saying we have a thriving coaching culture what would it look like what would your stakeholders be thinking feeling saying and doing if you did have that thriving coaching culture so have that in mind and then you can actually then look at your current reality and work towards that so with that in mind it's really doing the growth model for yourself in terms of your planning so you've got to have that vision you do have to be strategic and you do have to plan and you have to map it out. So having some sort of roadmap as we've utilised, um, that's been really useful. Um, you obviously do need to resource it adequately, but having said that, you can make a start without making a, a massive um, investment in coaching. It's important to get some key people trained and build capacity, but for some schools that might be thinking it's too difficult or it's going to cost too much money, it does not have to be too much of an impost in terms of a school's budget. That should not be an inhibiting factor at all. So having that planning in mind, having a direction, being able to take small, small steps, but you really do need to create champions as well. Really important that you've got someone to champion that vision um, to help build the capacity of others and then you can have that you know, follow on effect. So um, coalition of the willing, I often like to call it. So, and certainly at our college, we utilise the term that you know, we don't water our rocks. So you start with, with people that are willing and you just build and build and go from there. And really just, just have a go, start having those informal coaching conversations and building relationships with people. And hopefully others will find that people will see the practicalities of it that it actually works it just it just makes sense and there's really no school let alone no workplace um, in Australia let alone the world that should not utilize a coaching approach